What's going on, everybody? Got a new build for you. I would call this my Sentinel Biotech Ninja build or something. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of both the tech and biotic trees, which is actually what makes up a Sentinel, and play this something similar to a sneaky Vanguard, maybe? I don't know. Well, you'll see. It's, it's really, really effective. Had a lot of fun with it. Now, I'm going to do this a little differently this time. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and respec my character. And then I'm going to respec the two companions that I feel play into this build the best. And then we're going to go through and talk about each skill as we pick them. And uh, talk about why they work well with this particular build. Not just with our character, but with Korra and PB as well. These two put together kind of serve the same role that Miranda did in Mass Effect 2 or that Liara did in Mass Effect 1 and 3. Alright. So let's start with our character. Let's go to our skills here. Like I said, I'm doing this a little different. I'm just going to talk our way through it. Now, ideally, what we want is with the Sentinel profile, notice that combo damage is really what helps us out a lot. Also, as well, everything else plays in good to this build, too. The tech recharge speed and stuff like that. We're going to have to find um, biotic recharge speed as well, and we'll work that in. Uh, some of that will come with gear, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, notice I'm level 42, so I'm mid-game. I don't have a lot of the materials to make an elite set of gear and all that, so I'll show you the weapon that I chose to use and why and then the armor that I picked for this particular build, and why, and not having all of the augments and things in my inventory to actually make a full set. We're not going to go out uber-powerful, in-game, everything maxed out, having farmed for every little thing to show you guys how I can one-shot everything at the end. This is how I built this character. I thought maybe it'd be better to do it this way. And so we'll go out with decent stuff, and then when we've talked about the skills and we've talked about the equipment, We'll go on and we'll just go kill some stuff. And I'll show you guys some footage and show you the basic combo that I use here and how this works and how it makes the the character not only really survivable, but really, really effective. There's a lot of damage output with this build. Uh, probably the most I've gotten so far, and it relies almost exclusively on powers. You can use your weapon, but your weapon is, is secondary. And that's how I like to build characters in Mass Effect anyway. Taking advantage of the powers at your disposal. Okay, so let's get into it. Now with our skills... All right, we're going to leave combat completely alone. Well, what do I do about my weapon? Actually, your weapon damage can come from cloak. Okay, so that's secondary. If you want to drop some points into combat, that's fine. But I'd be making a beeline for this sentinel profile here, and that's going to require 116 points once you finally get them in both biotics and tech. So any points spent in combat is just going to delay you getting this profile unlocked here. And you're going to find it's, it's really not so much necessary your powers are going to do a lot of your work for you, okay? So your profile playing a big part of that. Now, as far as your training when you first start in character creation, what to go with, um, I started with, what was it called? The Guardian one, where you get an extra layer of protection. But I don't know that the Scrapper, or even possibly the Adept, wouldn't play in well too. I like the, I like the hint that the Guardian one was... Um, more of a sentinel base type thing where i mean the skills they start you with unlocking are both tech and biotic it, it kind of hints that that's what you want to do the extra layer of protection is nice but damage is what we're really talking about here so what we'll do is nova and charge are our two primary skills so this is a, a vanguard in a sense and then where tech plays into it we're going for tactical cloak and that and that keeps our uh our skill selection uh, basic and it's a real easy combo to pull off and it's going to essentially double your damage output even triple your damage output you'll see as we go along okay so we, we can't unlock charge yet let's get into nova these are no-brainer now we're going for all damage all damage on everything this is to taste this is up to you um the i i think we run into shields a whole lot more than we run into armor and we're going to find we're uh, effective against armor anyway as we go. So, so personally, I kind of like shields. Uh, but this is this is either or. This is this is to taste. It it doesn't so much matter. I think as far as uh, effectiveness goes, knocking an enemy shield down so that you can get them to where they can be knocked on their feet is advisable. But if you're not having a problem stripping shields as it is, maybe you're running with an automatic weapon that uses. Um, disruptor ammo or something and, and whatever you think you have shields covered then go with armor that's that's either or 
Um, me, I, I found that I run into a whole lot more shields than armor. And when I do run into an armored enemy, if I have to hit him one extra time, whatever. So what? That's just my opinion. Um, that's, like I say, that's opinion. That's not so much uh, a numbers thing. I've just found that I run into shields more. And then with this, of course, we're going with damage and we're going with the ability to prime. Okay, now we should have charge unlocked. Very good. We're going with, once again, damage and force. Okay, now we're going with more power damage and, and more force. Uh, and it enhances all powers for five seconds after charging. That's just bonus damage. And that's going to play into your Nova. Your Nova is going to hit so hard, you're going to be surprised if you hadn't been using it up till now, why you hadn't been using it. And then we're going to go with more damage. And you're wondering, well, with no cooldown, how often do you get to use these? And I found that is actually not a problem. But uh, our equipment is going to play into that. Especially the mod that we're going to place in our chest armor. And then down here, this all this good stuff plays into it as well. I'm going to go ahead and max out all these trees. 10% max shield sounds good to me. Like I say, this is a matter of taste. But uh, more is better. Shield... Regeneration is not an issue with Korra in your party. Keep in mind what your companions bring to the table with you. That's going to that's gonna play a huge part. And then max shields with an active biotic effect. I wouldn't go with that because we're not doing anything that has any overtime effect. We're not lifting anybody. We don't have singularity active. We don't have um, annihilation active. All of our stuff is quick strike stuff. So we'll go with this, movement speed. While shields are active, that sounds good to me. I'll definitely take that. And then this is this is to taste. I would say shields restored on biotic kills. You're going to be getting kills often. It's always nice to get back as much shields as you can. Offensive biotic, once again, we're going for damage. Now this, this is kind of up to you. Um, defense debuff from biotic effects... Since we don't have any damage over time stuff going, will it debuff somebody with charge? I haven't numbers tested it, but honestly, the 25% biotic detonator and combo radius sounds better to me anyway. I'll take 25 over 20. But this is defense debuff from biotic effects, meaning they take more damage from all sources. If you have both of your teammates attacking the same target, could you do more damage over time like that? Sure, but we're, we're looking to kill enemies quickly. So I'm going to go with that. And then, of course, we're going with the 30% botic damage bonus there. So now it's just starting to get ridiculous. Now it's just not fair. And then with this, this is going to um, shield restoration, I, I think, is the biggest part of this. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, here you go, 19% as it is. And that'll go up as we put more points into the biotics tree. That's the cool thing about these passives is the more you invest into a single tree the more of a return you get from these particular skills. Let's see, effect. Okay, duration is not an issue because we're not doing overtime effects. And then once again, you have uh, you have shields here. So we took, we took care of shields before. Now we ought to be able to obliterate shields with our charges and novas as far as that goes. As far as knocking enemies down, we're already going to be doing that. We're going to have so much force with nova that it's going to be ridiculous. So we'll go with that. And once again, increased duration of biotic power effects. We're not really worried about that. But here we get more radius and even more force. Biotic area of effect force, meaning that our Nova is now going to basically knock everything on its ass. We can stagger like Hydras and those big, uh, those big brute things, you know, the fiends and stuff like that. Now that is our basic biotics tree. Like I say, we're, uh, we're leaving combat alone for right now. And I'm I notice I have 114 what 105 points invested in biotics now. And then we'll have 114 into tech if we choose to dump them all in tech right now. We need to get both to 116 to unlock the highest rank of our Sentinel profile. All right, so here we're looking for tactical cloak. We can't unlock that yet, so let's jump down here. Let's look into auxiliary systems. Now this actually has something that we can use if I remember right. 100% combo priming rate, that applies to your allies. If you're bringing someone along, um, or if you have, say, a turret active, if you have a secondary profile, if you have Vetra with you, or something like that. Like I said, I would strongly recommend Core and PB with this build. But if you have, say, Vetra and Drac, whose ammo powers are able to 
prime enemies, this will help them prime even more often. If you're having a problem with weapon weight, if you're worried about your weapons, I don't know why you would be with this build, but let's say you are, you can go that way. I'm going to go with priming. That's a matter of taste. That depends on how you're playing. Tech effect duration, that's going to affect our cloak, which is the only tech power we're using here. And then power recharge time rebate. Now check this out. When you use a tech power like cloak, it causes all your other currently recharging powers to cool down even faster. And that's huge. And it, and it triggers once every 15 seconds. Sure seems to trigger a little more often than that. Possibly cooldowns coming from offensive tech affect that, um, that proc time right there. So we'll go with this. This really, really comes into play. You'll see that your charge and your novas are almost instantly available about every 10 seconds or so. That's how it feels. So that's just added cooldown. Nothing wrong with that. Then we'll go into offensive tech here. Now this, we're not really using tech powers. We're not taking advantage of uh, tech combos. It comes into how the, how, the, how the build plays. Now you could easily replace, say, charge with something like shield drain or incinerate or something else that can prime and detonate in some cases. But um, the charge is the ability to get in there and get shields back and keep your character mobile and, and get to your targets. Having some bonus speed while cloaked as well. Um, or essentially just having bonus speed just while you have shields active. That comes from our biotic tree. Allows you to get in there also. But uh, you're not really using much in ways of damage dealing with tech. But any point you put into tech regardless is not wasted. So if we can take advantage of any of this, great. Also, keep in mind that companions that you have with you may have some tech-related stuff. Once again, it doesn't apply to core and PV too much. It's not like this is wasted with core and PV. It's just that this doesn't apply to them as much. But we're going to put points into it anyway just because we have to dump points into tech regardless. Not, like I say, nothing is wasted. All right. So it, it, if nothing else, it applies towards tech cooldowns coming from offensive tech. See right here, tech recharge speed. It's only at 6% now, and it'll go up as we dump points into this into this skill tree. So let's say tech damage bonus to... Oh, let's just go ahead and, and focus on shields. Tech detonator. If we do pull off detonations, I would want that. And weapon damage bonus 30% after using a tech power, mainly shields. Ah, that plays into using our gun when we do use our gun. Like I say, our gun is sort of a secondary item, but it's not that we're not going to use it at all. And then this is just shields. Let's see. Squad mate power damage. And then power restoration and defense. Shield restoration and defensive effects. Now in this, this would help you get bonus shields back with charge, but we're, also we're, we're already basically getting all of our shields back the way we're set up. So let's go with this. Let's give our squad mates more power damage. And then team shield delay reduction, team shield regeneration, and tech construct health regeneration. The team shield and team shield delay. That's what we're looking for. And then, honestly, damage resistance per ally. Your tech construct has to be within range of you. I don't believe your allies do. They just have to be alive. And so this is another, now well, 18 to, well, if you are going to use a tech construct, 24%. Now, there's not a skill available for that, but you can make up to four different profiles with your character. Uh, applying all kinds of different skills and combinations. But this right here, any kind of damage resistance, that, that doesn't sound like much, but it, it really does add up. 18 damage resistance here, 20 there. Uh, Vetra gets some huge ones, like 120. She gets some really big ones. Let's, uh, we're going to go with this. And then let's go look at Tactical Cloak. This is our one tech skill that we'll actually be using. Now, we're going for, as, as much as I love Recharge... I cannot pass up a 50% damage bonus. I just can't. And that's going to help out our melee too. And with this, duration is irrelevant. 20% movement speed while cloaked. And then this right here is the most important. This is really what kind of ties it together. Is cloak duration after attack. Meaning that once you've pulled off a power or shot your weapon, you have a two second window to pull off another power. If you can get in and Nova the crap out of a mob, which you get in there with stealth, like a ninja. That's why I said I make it sort of my biotech ninja build. You get in there with stealth and Nova everybody and prime them and then charge and your charge is going to carry over your cloak damage bonus, which is 50% here 
and 50% here. And melee is 60%. Look at that. Gun damage bonus 50. And then you got another 40, 50, 50 right here. So it essentially doubles the power of both charge and nova as long as you're cloaked. You just need to pull off both, both powers within two seconds of each other. This really ties it together. Okay, now we have about 30 points just to dump. Uh, put it into stuff. You may want to uh, go for achievements. So keep a, a one dropped into your remnant VI. You might want some ranged abilities for a second profile. You have points just to dump in whatever you want. Me, I want to, uh, I still have some achievements to go for with this with this character here. So why not, why not get my flamethrower active? Uh, I know I have to set three enemies on fire at once. Why not go ahead and get incinerate active? Incinerating lifted enemies, right? That type of thing. All right, let's go ahead and get a turret going so that I can get my 100 kills with a construct. And I think we'll go with health there. We'll go with uh, gun damage and the cryo ammo. Can't pass up on cryo ammo. That's an amazing primer. That's with any build. Honestly, <laughs> that even pays into... Uh, like a Vanguard. Too bad you have to dump so many points into tech to do it. So that would do it here. And uh, we're going to need to get this to 116. There we go. Sentinel's now rank 5. And we're going to need to get this to 116. Um, let's see, I'm going to need to lift enemies and be able to throw them. So let's go ahead drop a point need. I'm just playing around like I say I, I not we've got our skills those are the skills that I picked and that's why I picked them and let's go ahead and dump the rest of those points like I say I need about nine more points there and we need about four more points here and that will give us rank six at rank five we already have a 35 percent combo damage 30 percent tech recharge speed which helps our our cloak a lot uh, power shield cost reduction. If you decided to go with Nova where it doesn't prime and you can just use it more often, but you give up a huge amount of damage and you give up the ability to prime like that. So anything that costs uh, shields such as, um, what is it called? Lance. Lance cost shields. You can reduce the cost by 40%. So if it says it costs half your shields per use, it only costs like, say, 30% of your shields. 40% of 50 would be 20%. And so you could reduce that a lot. Plus, there's more of that built into your skill trees. Things that reduce power cost and add to your shields and stuff like that. And notice the tech armor absorbs a significant amount of whatever damage get, gets past shields. Basically, you have an extra layer of defense the way I chose training when we first started. Scrapper and maybe even Adept might play into this well. But the tech recharge speed and the combo damage look good to me. That's fine. So we'll go with that. I believe Adept has some similar things too. Yeah, you have Biotic Force, Area of Effect Damage, which would help Nova. But I don't see any cooldown there. You know, so you, you give some and you get some. And you're not, and you're going to have to invest a whole bunch more into um, Biotics to unlock rank 6 for this. But we're probably going to anyway. So, you know, something. But anyway, I chose the Sentinel, and when I when I first chose training at the very beginning of the game, it kind of gives you something of a passive. I believe the uh, the pure biotic at the very beginning when you choose your character, when you choose training, it unlocks, like, uh, multiple combos. Like, if you if you set off a, uh, a detonation, the, that detonation can spread, and so you want to increase the effectiveness of that and basically nuke the place. That's how I'm going to be building my next character, which will be an Adept. Keeping that in mind. But with this one, this is this is what I thought worked best. And it seems to be working just fine. Okay, so let's go to Korra and PB. These are the two we're mainly concerned with. So she has Charge and Nova. She plays a lot like we do. And she has... This This is amazing. Shield boost for almost any character. She's like kind of the go-to. She's the Swiss Army Knife uh, character to put into your party to make everything work. To keep everybody alive and charge everybody and so on and so forth. Uh, PB offers a biotic damage bonus, and I don't even have her loyalty unlocked yet. Like I say, we're, we're kind of mid-game, but we'll talk about her tier, tier 6 skills, and it'll be obvious what to go with, especially if you're playing a biotic-based character. Even though we're using tech, our tech with this particular character is to basically double the damage of our biotics. And for those of you that have heard the complaints, 
uh, combos aren't powerful enough. The powers aren't powerful enough. Tech is so much better than biotics. And it's still really not powerful enough and blah, blah, blah. It's, well, I'm sorry if that's, if you feel that's the case because you're not doing it right. <laughs> powers can be plenty powerful. We'll go, we'll do, do some test running here in a little bit. Now, I did do Korra's loyalty quest. In fact, we just got done doing that, going and getting the arc. And so she has all of her skills available. Uh, I don't think she has enough points for everything, but we'll still look at everything. All right, so let's go into her main primary damage dealing stuff. We want her to have damage and force. And then the ability to detonate, obviously. And then with this, her recharge speed and shields restored. Um, this nullifies any any the charge's remaining recharge time when she falls below 30% health. Um, if she's staying hurt all the time, I've seen her to be pretty tanky. And regardless, I'll just take the overall 20% recharge speed, period. Alright, that's every time she uses that. She uses it as often as it's on cooldown. You can also direct her to use it by pressing uh, whatever direction she's sitting on, on your D-pad. When you're actually in combat, you just need to have an enemy targeted. Okay, let's look at Nova. Damage and force. We'll go ahead and give her damage against shields too, since we seem to be dedicated to that. Like I say, that's a matter of taste. And then we're going with the primer also. Okay, I would make sure. Yep, there we go. Damage and force. Very similar to our build. And then this. This is amazing. Okay, so what this does is it boosts shields and eventually even heals the entire party. And so if you have a 50% healing cap, meaning that your health regenerates to 50% and stops there, she'll she'll top you off. And she pulls this off like Cassandra does uh, Blessed Blades in Dragon Age Inquisition if you've ever assigned Cassandra that skill in that game. If you've played it, she spams it all the time. She uses this really often. Now an extra 35% uh, shields per second. We'll go with that. We're usually nearby Korra anyway. She's in there in the mix just like we are doing her thing. And then an extra 150% shield restore duration. And that also applies to this health restored per second, which is 10. May not sound like a lot. She can pull this off twice when you're at half health and you'll be at full health. She can pull it off twice. In other words, just a few seconds and you have all of your health back as well as your shields. And shield boost, shield boost initial health heal right there. All right. Now we're not going to have enough for these, obviously. But we'll go ahead and look at them. Let me go ahead and unlock these just like this. These are the basics. Okay, with this, um, this is to taste whatever you like. You can give her more melee damage or you can give her more shields and health regen. Um, I've seen her use her shotgun. If she's not using her power, she tends to use her shotgun more, it seems like. I don't know that she's in melee most of the time, so I try to watch how they play. This seems to be the more effective with the shields and health regen for her, just making her even more tanky. And then once again, this right here, it, it reduces incoming damage when she's at low health. But it also increases her maximum health and shields just overall. And how often does she get a power kill herself? We're honestly doing most of the killing. I don't think this comes into play near as much as this does. Alright, so we don't have the points for it, but we'll go with that when we get there. And then on this... Increase maximum shield as long as Korra is alive. Okay, max shield's 20% for everybody as long as she's alive, which is most of the time. She's actually kind of a badass. So maximum shield's 20% for the entire crew. That's pretty significant. And then we'll look at this. Melee damage and melee force. Blast weaker enemies back. We won't worry about that. We'll go ahead and just give her this. That's a matter of taste, Wh whichever you like. And then... More power damage, power force, area of effect, and all that good stuff. This this re regards her weapon. This regards her, her powers. We're looking at her powers. We're maximizing everybody's power stuff. And it especially helps in with us, too, because if they're priming, then we get to detonate. And if we prime, they get to detonate and stuff like that. And then this, even more damage and force and all that good stuff. So we'll obviously go with that. Not so much worried about this. She runs with a shotgun. and She can prime with the cryo. But I, I don't see it proccing all that much. I'd prefer to give something like this to... Uh, now, Drac is a different story. He's a shotgun also, but he seems to prime often. But with her, it's all about powers anyway. 
So we'll go with powers across across the board here when we get the points to do so. And there you go. But uh, the main thing with her, what she brings to the table, besides being able to prime stuff and detonate stuff and play well into what you're doing with your biotics, is her shield boost and her ability to keep everybody healthy. And everybody at full shields. And she, she really does pull that off often. Okay, so we'll go with that for right now. Now, I guess, what, about six, eight more levels? She'll be maxed out. And then PB. Now, with her, be careful. If you are playing a biotic and you're using charge, if she uses pull, it will prevent you from being able to use charge. Call it a bug, if you will, or maybe it's designed. I don't know, but don't invest anything into pull. She doesn't start with a point in pull. She starts with a point in invasion. You don't ever have to put anything in it. You don't have to respect her to pull the point out, in other words. Because as long as a point is in here, she's going to use it on her own, and she's going to screw you over trying to play any kind of Vanguard or Sentinel, such as we're playing right now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do what we can. Like I said, I don't have hers unlocked, but we'll talk about the top-tier skills and how they play in well into what we do. Now, Invasion, what she does is she debuffs enemies. And so what we want is we want AoE. We want AoE on this. We want her to debuff. What this does is it makes enemies take more damage, and it does some damage over time. So you can even see their health ticking a little bit when they're hit with this. So you'll know they're infected by it, and plus it stuns them for a second or two while they're getting infected, giving you a chance to get in there and punch them in the face. Okay, so we want we want AoE on this. We're not worried about how long it lasts, because we plan on wiping wiping the floor with everybody in seconds anyway. What we want is is number of enemies affected. Now we can increase the enemy debuff, and we can increase the spread radius. This is kind of up to you. I don't really care about the duration. The 20% spread radius sounds good, but that is, uh, well, it's whatever it is. Let's see, spread radius. Let's see, what do we got? Six meters here. I don't know what it starts at. Probably like four. Goes to six. And so if you got 20% more, I don't think it's 20% of four. I think it's 20% or it's 20 of six. I think it's 20% of four. That doesn't sound good to me. So what we're going to do is we are going to go with the extra 10% debuff so they take more damage. Now here, it, she can make the enemies do less damage or create a much bigger impact radius, much better bonus, and do more spike damage when she actually hits them with it. So I'll be going with this. Uh, this is this seems like a bit of a no-brainer to me. I don't care about enemy. They're not. They shouldn't be getting too much of a chance to shoot us. It's not that enemies aren't going to shoot you and hit you in the game, but we're mostly worried about this. All right. We're going to leave that alone. Now we can't unlock shockwave yet. Let's go ahead and put stuff into this. Um, power damage, power force, or recharge speed. In this case, she's not as much about damage and force. She has the ability to prime with shockwave. And she has um, the ability to infect. So I want her to do things more often. In her case, we're going we're gonna to take cooldown over damage. Except with this, where this has to do with her powers over her weapon. Her weapon is much, much, much a secondary thing. And then here we go. Team biotic damage. This is what we really want her along for overall. Team biotic damage, team biotic force. And then another 30% power damage and force for herself. This is what she brings to the table. So you get extra 10%. Not 10 points, but 10% of whatever your overall total is. And that's huge. And Or you can pick her gun damage. This is a no-brainer. So we'll be going with that when she unlocks her stuff. And then as far as this goes, this is just about making her a little healthier. We'll go ahead and give her extra stuff. Uh, you can make her barrier explode. Or, when she uses a power to take down an enemy, she and her allies regain some shields. So when she does kill somebody, here, she, here you go. Say her uh, invasion or her shockwave kills somebody, everyone gets a little bit of shields. That's kind of cool. And then on this, 40% max shields or extra gun damage, power damage bonus. Um, when her health is low. And could that be often? Yeah, I don't know. That seems like a sometimey thing. I think I would just give her more health so her health's not as low as often. I mean, this sounds good. This is great. But how often does that does that come into play? It's probably a 30 or 20% threshold at low health. So I would I would go with this. Personally, this is up to you. You know, whatever. 
and then we'll put points into shockwave and here this is kind of up to you what do you want her to do damage or do you want her to be a primer now i'm going to use her as a primer so i'm thinking uh radius possibly but i, I don't know like 50 percent of what not sure how wide the thing travels as it is As far as that goes, it's it's a little bigger, you know? So, I mean, are you priming more enemies? How, how often does that play into it? Don't know. Not really sure. Like I say, this is kind of a, a thing of taste. I, I tend to go with this, but I've thought about this. Damage radius. Could you possibly potentially prime more enemies more often? Mm, I don't know. But when she does use it, let's just make it more effective. So I'll go with that. Now, this is as tempting as this is, 50%, which is a, a pretty good decent because it's Pretty decent distance, because this thing travels a ways as it is. But being able to use it more often, once again, I can't pass that up. And then I'm going to set her to prime, so that I can charge and detonate these things. I can I can basically direct her, attack that target, and when I see that shockwave hit him, I can charge in there. And I can even stay cloaked and wait for her to use that ability, or see if she even has it on cooldown. If I direct her to attack something and there's no um, shockwave incoming, then I can get in there and Nova and then finish it up with the charge. So I'm going to personally pick her to prime. Now, if you're doing a lot of priming yourself, you might want her to uh, uh, use the unstable and do some detonating. I think this, plus its uh, I, its ability to lift enemies too and hold them suspended, I think that's that's pretty much ideal. It's going to be obvious when they're primed because they're going to be floating unless they've got a full shield or something or they're fully armored. And there you go. So that's, that's the points with our allies and what we'll unlock at tier 6. Now let's go take a look at equipment real quick and I'll show you what I did I don't even have the materials to make equipment here like I said I didn't want to show you guys the uber boss end game version of this build I wanted to show you how I built and why everything works together the way it does and then we'll go actually do some hands-on and go kill up a bunch of stuff really really fast with mid-tier stuff rather than having end game gear now there's two things to look for specifically when you go to actually make your stuff what you're looking for is first, once you've researched, here, let's go look at research real quick. Once you've researched armor, go for your N7. You want to unlock as much N7 as quickly as possible. And it eventually becomes level related, except the chest. You can unlock the level 10 chest early. But all the arms, legs, and helmet are level related. You can't unlock the rank 10 of, of that stuff until you're level 80. And then, as far as weapons go, the best thing I found, what works for me, is this. It's the Ushior pistol, and it's kind of like a pistol sniper. It only has one round in the clip, but it does a huge amount of damage. It's almost the equivalent of a sniper. It's nice, and it has one round in the clip. Now, what I do is when I make it, I use, I use these augments. Let's say if I was actually going to develop, which I don't have the stuff to develop a new pistol. It requires, I think, some vanadium that I don't have. Yeah, it's, it requires some vanadium. But look at those augment slots. It has five augment slots. What we're ideally going to do... Now, notice I, I, I don't have enough to make the Ushior. Let's use this phalanx as an example. What we want is, first and foremost... Uh, let's see. Let me find it. Where is it at? There it is. When current clip is full, plus 20% power damage. That is huge with this build. That's for your uh, biotic charge and your Nova. Just make sure that your Ushior is reloaded with the round in the chamber and then go to town with 20% extra damage. And everything else should be these, if you have them. Biotic damage boosters. Biotic damage boosters for every other augment slot you have in all of your gear. Period. Plain and simple. If you have enough, use them. You're going to get, believe it or not, in your N7 chest, you're going to get five augment slots. And then in your helmet, legs, and arms, you're going to get another three apiece. So let's see what's that. Nine plus, that's 14 slots. Now you get 2% biotic power damage with each augment that you put into your armor. So times that's another 28% there. Now notice the armor itself. Look at what it has if you look over there on the right. You have max shields, which is great. Biotic power damage. That's all this armor is about. Between the chest and fully upgraded helmet, legs, and arms. Not even at level 10. Let's just say level 5 helmet, legs, and arms. And a level 10 chest. 
you have roughly, oh, what is it? Uh, another 40% power damage. So you have about, uh, let's see, 20% plus 20%. You have 40% power damage bonus from your gun. Remember the Ushior? Or whatever else you use. There's there's some other weapons you can use. But just look mainly for one that has four augment slots. Why does mine show five? I'll show you in a second. It has to do with your cryopods. You can unlock um, some science, sci some scientists from your cryopods. And you can get an extra augment slot. We'll go look at that in a second. But uh, you put... For the first augment, you put the one that gives you 20% damage when the clip is full. And the other four, you put power damage, biotic power damage. You get 5% bonus in your weapon. Then you get 2% from your armor. So you literally have a 40% bonus from just your gun. And then you have another 20-something from augments in your armor. And then you have about another almost, what, 30-40% or whatever from the armor itself. And everything stacks. And then with Cloak, you are literally doubling the damage of your powers. So Charge and Nova actually become effective. You have survivability because you have Cloak, which even works well into this gun, which plays like a pistol, and everything has synergy. Core is keeping your shields up, PB's eventually giving you a biotic boost, and you're in there just kicking like way too much ass. We don't even have PB's companion stuff done, and we'll go do some fighting here in a little bit, and I'll show you guys some footage. I'll just leave you with some footage, and you'll see exactly how much power powers can put out if you build a character this doesn't mean just throw points wherever and hope that your powers work i'm talking building your character to make your powers work that's what well that's what rpg skill building is all about that's why i love making these videos so much because this stuff is fun to me now as far as that cryopod let's go over here and look at avp some of this stuff it takes a while to unlock you'll have to explore some planets and get this available, but what you're going to want is this. Increase augmentation slots by one on all research products pro projects. That's your weapon and your armor. You're looking to unlock that. It takes some prerequisites. I think you have to get, like, improved, development, accelerated research. You have to pick a couple things first and wait for this to unlock. Initially, your list will probably only be four or five items long, but as soon as this pops up, you're going to want this. Get an extra augment slot and everything. And there's also this really cool thing down in Commerce... It has the uh, the penalty of all fusion mods. Now, what fusion mods are this? They're what you put in your armor. Let's go take a look at that. This is this particular fusion mod is found from finishing the vault. As soon as you activate the what is it, the area purifier or whatever, at the vault on um, what is it, Keladar? What the hell is the Kaladin? Hold on a second. What is the name of this stupid... Now orbiting Kadara. Kadara. Yeah, Kadara. Finish the vault on Kadara and you will get this fusion mod. Here, let me get out of this stupid map. Like I say, I'm talking my way through this. I thought this was the best way to do it. So you guys can see the synergy of all the powers and why everything works with everything. Before we actually go out and do some fighting. But this is the fusion mod that we're looking at. Now, see, I've only got a 5, rank 5, and rank 6. And I have a few, like, biotic cooldown and even one or two tech cooldown augments in my gear because I didn't have enough power damage augments. So this isn't max gear. This isn't optimal. It's it's okay, but it's, it's not what I would ideally have designed for this. But here's what we're looking for. Fusion mod of rapid deployment. 50% all power recharge speeds. Minus 15% weapon damage. The other option, there's one that gives you 30% power damage. And you say, oh man, I'm going to stack that on there too. Keep in mind, powers aren't any good if you can't use them. This 50% power recharge speed and then that one skill that we have back here under the tech tree play in really, really, really well together and allow you to use your charge and your Nova and your shield drain as often as you would like. Right here, Omnivents, power recharge, time rebate, 50%. Once every 15 seconds. Like I say, it seems to trigger a little more than that. Every time a tech power is used, which is cloak. And the basic the basic pattern or combo is cloak and then charge, nova, or nova, charge. If you're close to a group of enemies, cloak, then nova them first and prime them, then charge and blow them all up. If you're away from your enemies, then cloak and use your pistol if you want to, but cloak and then charge in and knock enemies off balance. Then nova. By then, your charge is actually active again, and usually... Your your uh, your cloak is ready too. 
So you can literally charge in Nova about that time your cloak is ready to go invisible again and get that damage boost on your next charge or Nova or whatever. So you can set up your own priming and, detonat and detonations and keep in mind that you can direct your followers to attack your target as well. And so there we go. I know this was a long one, but I wanted to talk it through. Those are our skills. Uh, I'm sure you guys could skip around the video if you want to. But uh, that's how this works, and that's why this works. It's more than just pick a power and hope that it works well, but actually gearing your character to use those powers as, as effectively as possible. That's the gear. Those are the augments. That's how I build my stuff. Those are the skills. Those are the companions I'd bring along. You can switch those out for Vetra Drac if you want their ammo powers to, to prime for you, but I found that the passives that Korra and PB bring along make the survivability and the playability much more viable. That's my opinion. But PB, I would say PB is a go-to because that 10% power damage bonus that she gives to you all the time. That's a uh, that's a win-win right there. Okay, so I'll, I'll throw in a little footage of us going down. We're about to travel to Elden and go deal with the whole Krogan situation there. And uh, maybe uh, PB wants us to do something there. Maybe we'll include part of her companion quest. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you were patient enough to be here for this whole one, uh, this whole video, then uh, that was awesome of you. You could leave a like and subscribe if you want. That's really cool. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it, and I will catch you guys later. Y'all take care. Bye bye.